you can turn any mesh into a sphere with just one click or you can add a loop cut and not only control the location but also the angle do you want to know how to make perfect curves on a mesh or maybe you understand the different types of extrude tools stay tuned for this and much more as we explore every edit mode tool in blender and hopefully you learn something new let's start off with the extrude tool and the extrude region this is the irregular extrude we're all used to with the shortcut e with the face selected click and drag on the plus to extrude along the normal or within the circle to extrude in all directions or you can also switch to the x y and z mode and extrude along this axis extrude along normals is quite similar to extrude region but there's a huge difference in the nature of their extrusion this is what i mean select half of this uv sphere and extrude using the extrude region and we see that it goes straight up forming a capsule object but when you select the top half of the other uv sphere and extrude along normals we see that the faces go out in the direction of their normals next is extrude individual this extrudes faces individually in the direction of their normals extrude cursor is just clicking at any point on the viewport and the mesh extrudes to that point and now to the last member of the extrude family extrude manifold simply put extrude manifold is regular extrusion but with dissolved diagonal edges turned on and we can illustrate what this looks like using this example we have this mesh and we would extrude one side using extrude region and the other side using extrude manifold. The side for extrude region can be pulled out of the mesh while the side for extrude manifold cannot because during the extrusion it dissolved its edges along the flat surface. Moving on to the insert tool, this is a very popular modeling function. It's essentially taking all edges of a face and moving them inwards. The next one is a bevel tool which is another important modeling function as nothing in real life has a perfectly sharp edge. You do this by selecting an edge and clicking and dragging to bevel. You can increase the number of segments in the dialog box. Here in the dialog box you can also easily turn the bevel into steps. Go to custom, presets and click steps. Oh hold on a minute, what's that on top of the stairs? Oh, it's a subscribe button. Please subscribe if you're enjoying the video so far. Now let's talk about loop cuts. This simply just adds a new loop of edges around the mesh. When it's selected, go over to the mesh and a yellow line appears. Left click to confirm the selection. The offset edge loop cut creates two new edge loops on either side of the selected edge. I'm not particularly sure how this is useful but it is a good to know function. I'll say you want to create custom edges anywhere on any face on the mesh. That's when knife tool comes in. Left click to select the starting point and also left click to select other points. Double left click to close a cut. Use the X, Y and Z to snap to any axis and double click on the letter to cancel. Use C to cut through the other side and escape to cancel a selection. Next is the bisect tool which on the surface looks really similar to the loop cut tool. Click and drag on a selected area to add the new loop and by holding the selection you can adjust the angle. When you release the selection you can also adjust the angle by clicking around the circle and clicking and dragging on the arrow to adjust the position between it. Now I don't think a lot of old and new blend users know about this tool it's the poly build tool you can use this to basically create a mesh from nothing and it's also very handy in retopology when selected control and left click to add a vertex and while still holding control add two more vertices and then go somewhere in the middle while still holding control to form a chord you can add more faces by going to the edges with turn blue and left clicking and dragging or holding control and left clicking to form a try and doing that again to form a chord how many times have you wanted to make those curved pipes or curved handles you try to extract extrude and rotate, extrude and rotate, extrude and rotate. Well, I'm here to tell you that there is a much better way introducing the spin tool. So firstly, you have to move your 3D cursor to where you want your pivot points to be. You can spin in the X, Y or Z axis. The steps indicate the number of cuts you want. After you make the spin, you can use the arrows to adjust its position and shape. You can also use this part of the white circle to spin it even more. Spin duplicates are basically the same thing, so I'm just going to skip that. The smooth tool tries to flatten angles of selected vertices, while the randomizer applies a fractal noise pattern to randomize vertices. Edge slide and vertex slide does exactly what it says, slides edges and vertices along a mesh. The shrink slash flatten tool scales a mesh up or down based on the direction of the face normals. It's like scaling but in the direction of normals. The push and pull basically scales objects depending on the transform pivot point you have selected. You can also use it to pull meshes closer or farther away from each other. The share tool 
makes parallel edges move away from each other and it's a sphere too turns any mesh into a sphere. Ripigeum works with vertices and edges and separates a vertex and an edge, creating a hole. And finally, rip edge. This works with vertices and edges. It rips edges and vertices and immediately connects them to another vertex or edge. I'm not sure what this is useful for, it just seems to create a mess. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.